Hi friends, Miss Rondi here. Welcome to Infinite Color Studios for our very first inaugural um, project that we're going to be doing, and that is woodland animals. They are a red fox and a brown bear that you will be painting with opaque watercolor paints, and you'll be using some gel crayons also to make some details, and you will be using oil pastels to mostly make your outline. Um, <clears throat> in the painting, you will be using some techniques that are very simple, and it's the small touches of the gel sticks and the dry brush techniques that we're going to be talking about, and the special details that will encourage you guys to discover your creativity. Obviously, you can do several things um, that are different. It's your choice. You can do the brown bear and the red fox, or just one, whatever you prefer. So gather your supplies and get ready to join me for our... Okay, kids and families. First of all, make sure that you have all of your correct supplies that you need. Um, you can go smaller. I did with my grandkids. And a lot of the pictures you've seen on the website and such are a smaller paper. But um, preferably 12 by 18 um, white colored art paper of some sort, sulfite or mixed media paper. That's what I got with sacks, 12 by 18. And then you'll also need black oil pastels. My favorites, if I'm just buying one color, is Junior Artist. Um, you can find that on Amazon. You can find all this on Amazon. So you're going to need one black oil pastel. And you'll need your opaque watercolor paints. Crayola has actually come up with... Um, some pretty nice ones compared to what they used to have and that's what my grandkids used but we're using in this video Faber Castell and they are connector paints which is pretty cool so you take the lid off you can do your mixing in there wherever you wish to do it my space is limited they have the white opaque which we won't be using um, your browns your oranges will be mostly using but it's got two stacks and different colors so you can choose whatever your favorites are okay so we'll be using that and we'll be using gel stick crayons um, my favorites are mr. pen as you can see they're slightly well loved so gel crayons uh, look at all of this you can find on Amazon again so are you ready oh don't forget you'll need a medium round brush paint brush I also like to use a water filled brush, um, but a lot of times it's harder to rinse out. And don't forget some water and a paper towel or a cloth of some sort to wipe down everything that you need to wipe down. And in case of spills, they do happen for our young people and our older people too. So first of all, we're going to draw our fox. So, uh, you should be able to download a page that gives you, well, here we go. So pretty much about the middle of the page, you're going to write to draw kind of a little triangle. So you wanna get started there, fill it in. This is going to be your fox's nose, okay? Then from there, you wanna have just a, maybe about a 45 degree angle up and this is going to be the fox's draw, jaw line at 45 degree angles, okay? And then you're gonna go straight up from there. You can have it more rounded or more squared, whatever you prefer, and let your artist just discover themselves how they like things. From here, you're going to make a little triangle ear, triangle ear, and I kind of curved it because are animals complete geometric shapes? No, they have some features of geometric shapes. Then you wanna connect those ears with a small little bridge. Then on the nose, and I'm going to kind of fill this in a little bit. I like it better that way, I think. It's a big nose, big dog nose. Okay, so here we're going to go from here all the way to just below the ear, and that's going to be his fluffy whiteness area. 
and again the same side. Try to be as, you know, fairly even as you possibly can. Some little black eyes. Cute little eyes. My grandson made some cute little, almost manga style eyes. He didn't know what he was doing, but they were super cute. Your eyes can be any way you like. Some little black at the top of the ears. Doesn't have to be all the way filled in. It could be scratchy because these critters are furry. Okay, then down here, I would say about three fingers towards the middle, like under the nose area, you're going to draw a parentheses type thing. These are going to be your fox's legs, okay? And then you're gonna go a little bit, maybe three fingers, just a little bit above. And this will be the outside of your fox. And you guys can pause this video anytime you like when you need to catch up or rewind or whatever. That's why it's on video. And then draw some little claws. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're here to learn and to have fun. Next, after the claws, you want to connect the body between the feet. So just a little connector line up here approximately below the eye, you're gonna just swoop down and make that body and have it kind of meet up with that other line. You wanna pretend that it's going through. So swoop, all right? And then you're gonna swoop again, about the same place on this side, and you're gonna swoop down and match up with that side too. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. You can either fix it or start over. All right, now for the lovely fluffy table, tail. We're gonna start approximately right there, okay? So we're gonna go like a, a wave, an ocean wave. I don't know how many of you live near the ocean or have been to the ocean, but kinda like that, all right? And then we're gonna go as far to the edge as we can go possible and all the way to the bottom. Make those connections. And a little bit of fur, ziggy zags, some zigzag lines for your kids there. You can make them bigger or smaller, however you like. Okay, every picture is going to be different. They're going to be similar, but also different. All right, now you're going to want some zigzag at the bottom. Connect those, make some little paws. Also, you're going to want to have some texture, some f uh, implied texture, which is not actual texture. So it's not really furry, but it kind of looks furry. Okay, so that's implied texture. Just on the nose, the face makes it look like it has fur. Okay, and that's about it for the drawing part. Okay, so put your pastel away. I'll give you a sec to do that. Get out your watercolors. Now we're going to be using a wet on wet technique. So that means your paints are gonna be wet and your paper is going to be wet before you get it on there. So you wanna dip that paintbrush in the water. So first of all, we're going to do the, bri the nose area, the bridge of the nose. So just make sure to just get that all wet, all the ears. Don't go into the other side. Just get that little section wet. Up, down, and all around. Doesn't have to be sopping wet. You don't wanna have it rolling all over the place. And then you're gonna start with some red. Any kind of red that you like um, to make it look super cute. So I'm going to just choose whatever this red is here. It's actually orange. Looked red. So 
So you're going to start orange. I can fix that though. So if you choose the wrong color or you want to change colors, that's okay too. Pat it on your, actually it's orange red. So it's not really red, but it's not orange either. So now I'm gonna do orange. And I'm gonna add that here. I kind of want a little bit more orange than I did red and I'm going the next color and I feel my paper starting to get slightly dry so I'm going to just kind of wet it a little bit I'm going to add some yellow I'm gonna start at the top because it it will seem it will drip down even though this is not at an angle but it will ooze into the orange. Okay, good job, guys. Now you're gonna take that red, now you're gonna go into um, do the body. We're gonna do the body. So we're gonna get that all wet. And if I had my bigger brush that I left at my school, I would use that to get this whole body just wet, 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 wet. I don't want to dump water on there because I don't want it to go into the tail just yet. And I don't want it to go into the nose or the the cheek area just yet either. And I don't want to get the paws because those I'm going to paint black. So you may see a little bit of orange in your wet water uh, because of the um, rinsing process. If you don't like that, well, go clean your water. Otherwise, it adds to the to the color of the of our little man of our little uh, fox here. Okay, so now again, we're going to start with the reds. I have an orange red, and I'm going to start over here. It's just going to be super dark. I want kind of like a shadowy area, but it's also wet on wet, so it does ooze through, as you can see, especially down here where the paper is probably a little more wet. And I'm going to do the same a little bit over here. And some down here. And some down here. Pretty much the painting is really up to you. I'm just giving you some techniques, some cute things that you might wanna do. Okay, orange, we're gonna get some orange. Actually, I wanna go back to that orange red and do under the, under the, under his face. There you go, and you can see the bleeding through, which we want, we want that. That's perfectly normal. That's why we're doing it wet on wet. Okay, back to orange. All right, so I'm gonna do most of the arm or leg, front leg, orange. And do you see how the colors mix through? We want that to happen. It's really cool. Watercolors are awesome. I love them. Do we need to be perfect? Nope. That's the fun of it. Am I holding this like a pencil, like I'm drawing? No, I'm holding it way out here. We are not writing a story. We are painting a story with our art. 
So painting and drawing, you don't want to hold your pencil, your paintbrush so close like a pencil. You don't want to do that. You want to be loose. You want it to be free. Then just kind of fill in all the areas that you want to be orangish. All right. I want a little bit more orange over this way and I want more water. It's getting dry. So don't add so much water that it starts to um, get bubbles on it like little like that. You want it to have to be smooth and not have the paper coming apart. I find that happening a lot, especially with like kindergartners. They scrub on their paper and you don't need to scrub. This is just painting. It's not cleaning the bathtub, guys. Okay, so some of this I'm kind of just leaving it light. Um, not really adding more paint, just spreading what I do have. And I'm going to add some more yellow to the belly of... I'm going to add some yellow to the belly of the... To the belly of the beast, to the beastie. Because his top coat, I think I want to add some orange down there just to give it, I don't know, some shadow and more yellow. Okay. I'm not going to do the feet yet. I kind of want that to dry a little bit before we go to the feet. Now we're going to do the tail, the fluffy tail. So again, you're going to get it all wet. As wet as you dare. Again, we don't want to flood it, but we also don't want dry spots. So just kind of check it in the light a little bit. Make sure everything's wet. And then you're gonna add maybe a little bit of red down here towards the bottom. Your red or your red orange. I'm using a red orange. Okay. And then your orange. some orange around the edges darker a little bit you know a little more paint less water so if you want a certain color you add more paint less water and you see how that just kind of oozes through I kind of want to just leave it that way a little it doesn't really have to be actually painted and then you kind of want to let that seep through up here just a little bit, just a little bit. Because you want the tail mostly white, but you want some color. Because those foxes, man, they're getting in the dirt and under the ground. And are they perfectly white and clean? Probably not. Same with the face. We're just going to add a tad of yellow, tad a little bit right around the edges and again just or orange I mean yellow orange whatever color you choose and then I'm just gonna water that down a lot okay there we go so there's no definitive line in the face where the color ends at least not from my point of view okay Now, the black. You're gonna get your black, but you don't wanna to put too much water in there. You want it more dry than wet. And I'm not going to wet the feet because I do not want it to smear all over the place. So I am just going to take my mostly paint-filled brush, not water-filled brush, and paint the feet black the claw area. Oh. 
Okay, now that that's done, you're gonna wanna let this dry for a little while, okay? Okay, now that we're waiting for this to dry a little bit, we're gonna work on our background colors. Um, so you wanna get out that black pastel again. You can draw whatever you want to in your background. I'm going to draw just some trees and maybe some leaves at the foot of the fox. So some trees and you can draw whatever you want to. You can draw mountains. I am gonna draw mountains in the, um, the bear video that I'm going to do next. Well, I'm going to include it here. So just some trees. Remember your trees are not perfectly straight. They have texture. So we're going to draw some implied texture again, whatever you feel like doing here. Maybe a limb was cut off here and you have a knot. Okay, those little circles are representing a knot in the tree. And maybe you wanna have a little bit of ground down here. That's part of the tree. Okay, some more parts of the tree, a different tree. You want to go off the edge of your paper with your trees. However you feel fit to draw your trees. Or maybe you just want a plain background with nothing in it. Don't forget your ground line. And I have a paper under mine uh, so if I go off of it, that's fine. I am trying to make some painted papers with just, um, that tree looks like it needs to be like that. Okay, and it's calling out to me to make it so. So down here, you're going to want to have some cute little leaves or whatever, rocks, whatever your heart desires. Don't forget the veins in the leaves. And to show some overlap, you want to have a leaf going underneath, and that shows some perspective. And remember, you can go off the edge of your paper. We want it to. We want it to look like it's a full grown picture. Okay, and the ground will probably do some dry techniques on that after um, we paint it. So now that that is, draw is drawn, we can paint the background. I'm gonna paint the sky area a bluish color. So we're going to wet it, go around the trees. Now, if you want to do a sunset, you want to start out with some purples and blues, and then it goes into reds and yellows towards the earth. Um, if you want to do just a blue sky, then you might want to um, remember we don't paint a sun like a big circle, although your little ones probably will do that. Um, that's okay. That's a, an age thing. Although I still see it in seventh and eighth graders, so <laughs> it's cute. If you wish to have clouds, you'll want to go around, leave it white. Okay. Like that. 
you um, with watercolors, you just make the clouds by leaving space. And sometimes your paints will tell you, um, a cloud needs to be here, so we're just not gonna go that way. Our little paint job. Okay, don't forget between the trees, the limbs and such. Maybe this is an old tree with not many leaves. Maybe it's the fall. So we're going to start with some blue. I'm going to go darker at the bottom. No clouds were really calling out to me there. Down here, between this area. And here I am going off the edge of the paper. And you can use the same blue that's still in your brush. Or you can just go get some more. Okay, and this little corner here, as you can see, I still have blue in my brush. I'm just gonna see what happens. That's fun. Okay, some swirly stuff. Probably should have left that, that was neat. All right, then down here, we're gonna make a base brown because I do want you to kind of use your gel sticks and your dry brush technique to um, make some more brown or black even. So we're gonna, whoops, get it all wet, go around the leaves. Try to work as fast as you can because the paper does dry. Okay, get your brown ready and go. Remember, the more you wet your brushes, the more the paints are gonna bleed through wherever you lead them. And the drier it is, the more color you're going to have like that. Okay, that's good. Now for the tree. I think we'll work on that next. So I've got two browns I'm going to use because our tree's perfectly brown. No, nope, they sure aren't. So I'm gonna put that up there. And maybe you wanna use some of your dry technique on this also, so you'll probably wanna wait for that to dry. So we're going to be 
just wetting the tree down, go under the foxtail, get it all wet, get the arm wet, the branch. And with the pastels, it does smear a little, so that can add a little texture. That's okay. That's okay. You want that. And don't forget to go down here to the bottom of the tree. Remember, we added it under the fox's tail to look like a real tree. Okay. I mean, do trees just stop at the tail? No, they keep going to the ground. So I'm going to add various different browns. Maybe even mix them up a little bit. It's up to you how you want your trees to look. I'm just giving you an example of what you can do, not what you should do. Well, kind of should, but also can. Okay, now don't forget the other side. Get it wet. Again, you can pause these videos anytime you want. Rewind them. Watch them over and over. Watch it through the first time. That might also be an idea for future videos because there will be more coming. Getting that all wet. If you have a bigger brush for all these large areas, I suggest you do that. Uh, if you want to keep them detailed and small, that's fine too. You are going to discover your own techniques, how you like to hold your brush, how you like to paint. This is all about discovery. Okay, now that the trees are done, you can work on your leaves. Is it fall? Is it winter? Probably not winter, if they're still on the ground, unless you're where I am, which is the Southwest. <laughs> uh, not many seasons, at least. Not in the Sonoran Desert where I live. Okay, so we have various greens and oranges and yellows and reds you can add. So make, you know, make your choice. Do you want mostly orange leaves? Do you want red orange leaves? Do you want yellow leaves? Or all of the above? I just added a little bit of yellow in there. Kind of turned out a little green. I think that must be from the blue still in my brush. Okay, some orange again. I'm going to go back to that red orange we had with the fox. And don't forget, you can add your details with your color sticks or your dry paint techniques.
your gel sticks. So I'm going to add a little bit of red to that. There we go. Just a little on the bottom. Okay, the painting part is finished. Now, your fox is mostly dry, so you're going to gather your color sticks. And on your fox, you can draw some fur, um, like things, you know, some dry uh, fur texture. That's up to you if you want to do that. So here's an example of how you might want to make that go. Just a little bit of furs. You don't want to color the whole thing. The paint is a background, but then again, you also don't want to lose the beautiful uh, paint. So if you don't want to do this, this is fine. Because personally, if it was me, I would probably just leave it. Um, but I'm showing you some different ways to do things. So there's some orange, orange color stick, gel um, crayon. So this, this one here might need some red. So we're just kind of adding some fur, some little fur here, some fur there, because he's furry, right? He's a furry little ball of fox. Don't go crazy, because if you mess up, you mess up. You have to start over. Just go how you feel. And you can, you know, fix your mess ups if you want to. Or sometimes it leads to a different type of art and you've discovered something cool. So don't be hard on yourself. If you feel that you've messed up. I'm gonna add some more yellows. Cause this down here is not, it's just yellow. So just adding some texture to the little guy. All right, that's all I'm really gonna do. Maybe add some yellow up here. Furry little furs. Okay, don't go crazy. All right, um, tail, don't forget tail. Tail's very, very fluffy. Do you see I'm kind of just not doing anything with the outside. Plus it's mixing a little bit with the black pastel. So if that happens, just wipe it off on your paper towel all right, no big deal. Just wipe it all off. It comes right off. Let's see. Did it mix there too? Not really. I'm not too worried about the red. All right. Um, now, the dry technique. So, get that brush. Mostly dry. You want to squeeze out a lot of that water. So, on the ground, actually, I want a tiny bit of water. Does it if, if your paint is dry already, then you want to get some water on it. But for the dry technique, you want to kind of dry out that brush a little bit as best you can. And then go back to the paint. So, try to, you can test it out on a separate paper to see how it's doing. Too wet, in my opinion. So there's a little bit better. Okay, too wet. There we go. That's still kind of wet. All right, so let's go with the leaves, let's say. You could also do this with the color sticks, with your gel colors, once the leaves are dry. And I would suggest you kind of wait for that. So my leaves are still pretty wet. So let's go to the ground. Some brown. There we go. Now you can see it's kind of like a painting but also not it's not running through like it was like up here over here just get a little bit of brown and I'm using that different brown that I have that's not the same as the ground that way you can see it better I really need to add more water because that'll get so wet but you can see you can see the little browns starting to come out they come alive. Dry your brush. Get to that dry brown. Over here. Dry that brown. 
a little bit. And you can do this with the leaves, with the trees, however you feel your picture needs. Again, you can also do that with the gel sticks, the gel color sticks. This is like almost a completely dry brush and a little bit of paint. Okay, do you see the dry strokes? I hope. And I'm gonna have to add a tad bit of water, but I'm gonna wipe it on the paper towel. You see the difference? Too much water, probably. There we go, it's a little more dry. Okay, he is pretty much done. Um, there you go. And we're gonna do the bear in just one second. Okay, friends, get ready to do your bear, to draw your bear and to paint your bear. Um, get out your handy dandy black pastel or oil pastel, not chalk. Do not use chalk. Um, use oil pastels or a black crayon is also fine. If I were doing this in my art class, I would probably just use a Sharpie so that it is seen better by the students. So parents, you might feel like doing that yourself if you are joining your student um, or your your uh, person, your child or teenager. If this Anybody can do this. There's no age limits. So to start with our bear, we're going to go about a whole hand or more, I would say, because we want to draw some mountains in the back, I think. So maybe two hands worth. And you're going to draw that little bridge between the ears. We're going to do that first. Okay, and you can use your wrist as a compass. So you can hold your wrist completely straight and just draw a compass. It's kind of harder to do a circle that way, but half circles and little arches, you can definitely do. I mean, you can go, if you have a more flexible wrist than me, you can go maybe 90 degrees there. Um, so then you're gonna draw some gummy bear type ears. Your bear is gonna kind of look like a gummy bear, maybe, depending on how you draw. So some cute little ears. Do they have to be perfectly even? Nope, they sure don't. They just have to be noticeable as an ear. All right, then we're gonna draw again some little chubby parentheses on each side. And younger students probably won't know what a parenthesis is. So you could help them with that. Then we're going to draw our front paws, claws, legs, whatever you want to call them. So we're gonna draw those first, and we're not gonna be drawing the bottom half of our bear. So here you're gonna go all the way around, big parenthesis, another big parenthesis shape, and then you're gonna just go up, boop, boop. That's probably a little too wide, but I'm not erasing it, Miss Rondi can also make mistakes. Here, you're gonna do some little ears. Color that in black. Again, if you don't have pastels, crayons are just fine. Take a look at it. Is there anything you want to change? Maybe I want that one to be a little wider. Maybe this one a little bigger also. Then about right here. Well, actually I want to do that. I want to do the nose. So I would say about mid face. Kind of draw a triangle, but you're going to round that out. So that's just to give us the general shape that I would like to see. And then I'm going to round it out, fill it in. 
And then I'm gonna make him have his cute little smile that bears have. Do not be deceived, bears are not nice. <laughs> Do not go play with bears, children, okay? Um, cute little eyes, looks like a cute little gummy bear. Try to make them approximately the same area on the page. And then some cute little eyebrows. There, isn't he handsome? All right, and then over here, we're gonna make his body. And we're gonna go clear to the end of the paper. Start about the same side. And make your little body. Okay, so that's pretty much the drawing part of the bear. Um, my bear is also gonna hold a twig of berries. I'm debating whether to draw that now or later. I'll draw it later so that you can see how that's done. All right, so again, with the fur, you might wanna put in some fur like we did with the fox. Just some little lines for, what is it called? Implied texture, very good. Is it real texture? Can we feel it? No. So it is implied texture, good job. All right, so we're gonna leave that there. Now we're gonna get out our paintbrushes and we're gonna get out our favorite color of brown or even black. There are black bears, there are brown bears, there's even golden bears. If you want to, you could make this a polar bear, but they also have color. They have a lot of rust color and yellows in them. Um, they're not completely white, but we're gonna go with a brown bear. You can choose what you want. I am going to go with the brown bear. Again, we're going to do the wet on wet. So we're going to get our bear all wet. And if you have a bigger brush than this, go for it. But don't go outside the lines. You don't want that smearing out. Okay, you just want to go in the lines. I know, it's hard for some little people. That's okay. That's okay. They're learning. It's even hard for some grown-ups. We're all learning. Get that bear all wet. Yes, your pastels are going to smear a little. And that's okay, we want that. Although I think mine are kind of old and they're just, you know, getting crumbly. Okay, so we want all the bear to be wet. And remember, we might have to add more water as we go, as we did with the fox to make sure that it gets, that it stays wet. Go all the way to the bottom with your water. Check it out from the side. If you feel you have too much water, that's where the little handy dandy cloth or paper towel comes in. Whoops, we got a little bit of pink stuff there. Didn't know that was under there. Under where? Under there. Just kidding. I'm sorry, I've been dealing with too many elementary students. Okay, here we go. Fun brown bear. I'm gonna start at his top, his crown. And I'm gonna go all around his cute little face. I'm just gonna kind of go in a circular motion. As you can, you will see that I am going to leave his muzzle, that's his nose or his snoot, a little bit white. I'm just gonna go around him, kind of like that. Okay, and you can color the whole thing if you want to, but I'm just not going to. Okay, I'm also gonna do the same thing with his belly. I added a little bit more water because I felt my paper getting dry. So you kind of just need to feel your brush, is it? 
too dry? Look, is it scraping the paper or smoothly going along the paper? So if it's scraping the paper, it's probably too dry. And we'll use that technique later for our dry brush technique. If you feel, if you see your water pool, kind of like I did right there, just scooch it along if you don't want it to. If you want it to, that's fine. That's cool, you know, that's fine. Um, but I didn't, so I scooched it along. Just keep moving water. And I feel it's getting dry there again, so I'll add more water. There, so there we go. Now, I can feel the belly is a little wet, or dry. So I added some more water, even though I'm not going to really paint this. But as you can see, some of the brown is going down and I do, I do like that. I do want that. So this kind of fades into like a soft beige right here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. And so I'm gonna add some more brown water here because I could feel that it, with the brush, that it is getting dry again. So we're going to add some more water. Going around, going around. And like I said, I kind of wanted to keep that center whitish. Yes, this is not looking like a real bear. It's more like a gummy bear. But we're, you know, we're experimenting. As you get older, you can do much better watercolors. I have a friend who does watercolors. It's absolutely amazing. Just beautiful artist she is. And if she's watching this, Maybe she'll come do a show for me. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, all right, we're done with the bear. So then the next thing is the background. So on this bear background, I would like to add some mountains and some pine trees hanging down, I think. So we're going to do that. So what am I going to use? Hmm, Miss Rondi, what are you going to use? I'm going to use my handy dandy black pastel or black crayon. That's the colors I like. You can use brown. You can not use any and you could just paint it. That depends on your style, what you like. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of draw a line there. And this is going to be one of my hills. Okay, and then I'm going to draw another line another hill and this is going to add some dimension some spatial perspective so up front we have our foreground and our in our foreground is our bear um, in the middle ground we have this lower hill and then further in the background we're going to have our higher hills so they're going to be higher on the page and lighter and f smaller so that's how that's going to go then we got a big hill here and a big hill here. And then I'm gonna have my furthest hill along way back there. And then back here we're gonna paint white um some bluish colors for the for the sky. Okay? So again, if you're having a sunset picture, you want to start out with perhaps dark blue, lighter blue, some purples reds, orange, yellow. Okay, you're going to follow the, uh, you know, as close, if the sun was right here, it'd be yellowish, going off into oranges, reds, purples, blues, and dark blue. If you take notice when you're outside, um, what the sun looks like, that's how it looks. Um, it's really, really amazing. I'm going to use a turquoise blue, I think. But what am I going to do first? I'm going to get that thing all wet. And how do I make my clouds if I want clouds? 
Well, sometimes I let the paper talk to me and it tells me, mm, I don't want to go here, so I want to be a cloud. And how do we do that? By leaving it blank. We just leave it white. Um, there are, I do have white opaque watercolors and you could paint the cloud in kind of like a, an acrylic um, paint. But most watercolorists leave it blank. They just leave it. The sky is usually darker at the top. Like I said, with the sunsets, they're gonna be a dark blue or even black to dark blue. And then all the other colors down. I like this turquoise for my blue sky. It's different than the fox. I'm gonna add some more water because I feel the paper did not quite get wet there. Just a little bit of blue, but I'm gonna mix that. I'm gonna spread it around. I don't want it to be as dark as this. And I see it pooling. Maybe it's telling me that's a thundercloud. It's a thundercloud. I want it to be dark and ominous over here. If I was to do that, would I add some black to my blue? I'm gonna experiment. You don't have to do this. Get some blue and a tad bit of black. Oh, more black. Okay, see how darker that is? A little bit darker, not much, just a little. That is called shading. So you, if you wanna shade your pictures, you certainly can. You could just add a little bit of black in there. All right. Now we're gonna do the next mountain. I'm working my way down while the bear dries just a little. We don't want it perfectly dry, just a little bit. We don't want sopping, sopping wet either. So we're just giving it a chance to dry up a little. I'm going to use a beautiful fuchsia looking pink. And I want it to be darker, so I'm gonna add some more, more paint. Remember, more paint is darker. More water is lighter. Just let it talk to you. How does your mountain want to look? It will tell you. Okay. Then I think I will add kind of a darker blue for this front mountain here. But what am I gonna do first? I'm going to get it wet. I'm gonna go over this side. Try not to get into the bear that is drying because you want that, unless you want a blue bear, you know, with a, a brown bear with a blue ear, that's, that's, that's doable. We could do that if you want to. Okay. Darker blue. And if your colors do bleed into your bear like that, get your paper towel or towel, dry it, and then re just repaint it with or add some more water to it. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna just add some water that kind of helps erase it a little. Get that brown you had.
there now none is the wider wiser that we got some blue in there right and we're just gonna smooth that out with my finger okay back to the blue Now we're gonna do the next mountain. If you feel like mixing colors, like maybe you wanna add some red in that other one right there, you can do that um, while you're painting, that's fine. Or maybe a darker fuchsia color, or even neon if you have neon watercolors. That sounds fun. Is it natural? No. Are these pink mountains natural? No, not really. Or if you want to do a purple one, that's fine too. Whatever, whatever you feel like doing. So um, that's exactly what I'm going to do is a purple one. blue purple there too so see you can mix other colors in there too this is just a little bit of a blue purple it's not as dark as adding blue all right and one more on this side <sighs> hmm which color should we do there's a darker purple here. And again, we want to add some water to that. So now you can see how much water I have on there for future reference. And if you don't like that much, sweep it off. I didn't sweep off that much. You want to keep it somewhat wet. It just mingles right on in with the paper, with whatever other colors you have. That's called mingling. And this bottom part, I want kind of a golden. So we're going to rinse that brush really good because we don't want purple in there. We don't want brown. That's okay. We can have browns in there. But we don't want all those other weird colors. So I'm just doing one side at a time. So I want kind of an ochre color. It's not yellow, it's not orange, it's not yellow orange. It's kind of a golden wheat looking color or mustard. I guess I would say mustard color more of a mustardy color. And because it's wet, it mingles really well. Just taking its own stride, going where it wants to go. Okay, get my 
ochre. Kind of does look like a wheat field. I spent some time in Washington State driving on the hills there. There wheat fields, beautiful. We don't have that much wheat here in the southwest where I live. So super pretty. I miss driving all those hills. I do. That's one thing that's pretty cool. So our bear has mostly dried. And now we're going to get out that our gel pens or gel crayons. And I'm going to get out a black one. You could use a crayon, your black pastel, or your gel crayon. Oh, I think that's gray. I don't want gray. I want black. Found it. Black. All right, get out your black gel crayon. You're going to give your bear some more dimension. And these are smudgeable very smudgeable so if you want to give them some shadows you can do that like the pastels are also very very smudgeable you want to give them some little claws or implied claws are they real claws no and we're gonna draw our berry stick in here he's holding it's some sort of berries maybe holly you can use crayon or your gel crayons or your oil pastels if you have like a whole oil pastel kit um, you can use that. Then later on, I'm going to draw the leaves for the, uh, the trees. It's starting to get dry. That's why I did that part first, because I wanted that to get dry first. All right, so we're gonna see, save that for later. We're going to get a red colored of crayon or gel crayon. I'm just coloring those red berries red so pretty I love these crayons they're just magical so smooth it's almost like lipstick ladies if you moms are listening or I don't wear lipstick personally really but those that do know how smooth it is going on and that's how it feels okay so we've got our red and next is our leaves, our pine trees. So I'm going to draw just some coming down. Are they perfectly straight? Nope, they sure are not. Okay, they have little tiny short things coming down and they're usually going down, where they go? straight depending on the kind of evergreen that you are looking at i'm kind of saving some of this for the green i don't want it all black i just want some like undertones of the black give the green a little bit more depth i think maybe some over here like this Remember, he's in the woodlands. Okay, and I'm gonna have some over here. Some students will just draw regular trees or whatever tree they feel fit. That's okay, they can draw that. 
um, it does feel dry enough. I'm gonna draw another one down here. You don't want it soaking wet because these will these are water soluble, so they will also spread. Which sometimes maybe you do want that. You know, maybe you want a little bit of shadow under the arm and you're gonna just move that along. See how it spreads like that? Maybe you want a more definition under his chubby neck. Okay, not too much on that side. All right, now you're gonna get out your greens and blues. My daughter-in-law, who lives up in the Northeast, reminded me that not all trees are just green. Some of them have blue in them. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yours is so beautiful and amazing. So you're gonna do your twigs, your prickly pine needles that you have. And you can get, if the top is usually thinner, but we're just getting an idea. We're not Bob Ross here. Not yet, right guys? Not yet. Those of you that know who Bob Ross is. I feel I would like these to be more fluffy, more fluffy, thicker. These are the gel crayons. Again, you can use gel crayons or regular crayons or even your oil pastels. The gel crayons and the oil pastels will smudge. So if little fingers like to go roaming, they will smudge it. I don't know if you can tell, but mine are kind of curved. And so I feel that that adds a little dimension to the leaf. If they're just leaves, each one of these needles. Okay, then we're gonna go back down here to this guy. On the bottom. putting this one away and I'm going to use the blue now to again give it some more depth dimension I'm kind of keeping the blue towards the inner twig though I think that looks cool thank you Megan my daughter-in-law for showing me that technique Miss Rondi learns things every day we are not too old to learn. Don't forget that, kids. We don't know everything yet. That is for sure. We have so much to learn from each other and the world around us. Just open your eyes, observe. You might wanna get a sketchbook, start drawing stuff. So again, you can pause this video anytime you want if you need to catch up. Mr. Penn's gel stick, gel crayons. I love these. Oh, so awesome. Now I'm going to use a darker orangish yellow gel stick. 
gel crayon. I can't, can't stop saying gel stick. I'm just going to add some dimension to this. I'm not going to use that finger because, well, I used it on the black and it's all gross. So I washed it a little. Let's see if that helps. But I want to, I want to smear it a little, I think. You don't have to. You can do what you want. But I think I like that idea. Just giving it some... Make sure your fingers are clean if you used them on the black. Or you'll be sad. All right, um, same with the purples. But they're further in the distance. Are we gonna see as much detail in the distance as we are up close? No, we are not. So I think I will stop with the purples. Okay. And I won't do as many. Just a little, little bit less, but some. loose remember we're not we're not writing a story we're loose with our our art um, brushes colors and pencils even when we're sketching we're just loosely sketching we're not uh, we're not angry unless you are angry then you know there are artists that do that and that looks cool too okay so you have your brown bear there it is Thank you so much for joining me and please email me any reviews or comments or things on how I can do better. Okay. This is a beta test and that's why it's free. So I am super excited to be bringing this to you. Please, um, again, email me with any thing I can do better, any testimonials you would like to give. How can I make these easier for access? Whatever your suggestions are, I will take to heart. Thank you so much.